Here's a map of the Triple Crown of U.S. long distance hiking. It's a three panel map showing the Pacific Crest Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, and the Appalachian Trail. It was made in ArcGIS Pro, and I'll show you how to do it. This is David Nova. He's hiked all three trails, the Appalachian Trail in 1984, the Pacific Crest in 2005, and the Continental Divide in 2002. His daughter Jacqueline, my colleague, asked if I'd make a map to commemorate it. Absolutely! And here's how you can make the same map. Let's look for some public data. And the best way I've found to do this is to search for the thing and then the word shapefile. It's the data sleuthing fast track. And this is how I found good line geometry for all three trails, the Pacific Crest, the Continental Divide, and the AT. Let's get this into a good projection. I want something that's fair about distance because that's what matters when you're hiking these things. So I'm gonna search for equidistant and I'll look within continental and choose North America. And there is trusty old USA contiguous equidistant conic. And it also happens to be charmingly beautiful. This trail line geometry is actually too good. I just need a visual representation of these trails, but there are thousands of line segments and loads of attributes. How can I crunch these each into one line per trail into the same layer? I'm going to give them each a new field. I'm going to dissolve based on that field, and then I'll merge them together. So for each layer, I'll add a new field. I'll give it the name tr underscore name, and I'll make it a text field, and I'll give it a character length of 36. That's plenty for me. Same thing, all three layers. and I can't forget to save this new field for each of the three layers. It's a little sneaky, but you have to have the attribute table selected and then go to the fields tab and then hit the save button. Now all three of my layers have a new text field called TR name. Using the calculate field tool, I can apply the trail's name to all 3000 plus little segments of it. And remember, I'm only doing this so I can use the dissolve tool later to melt all of these segments into one single line. So I'll add the trail name here and hit OK and oh geez, I've got an error. <sighs> it's because I didn't put single quotes around the text string. This is one of the many reasons I could never be a developer. OK, now I've added the text for all of these segments. And then I just do the same thing for the other two trails. OK, now we can close all these attributes up. And now it's time for the dissolve tool melting away our segments. I want to make multi-part features, so I'll have one line per trail. And then I'll run it, and with the resulting layer, I can confirm that I do indeed have one feature instead of like 3,000 features. And now I can get rid of that original layer. And then I can dissolve the other two trails into single feature layers as well. And now, for convenience, I'm going to merge them into the same layer, because I only want to do the symbology once. And I'll use the Merge tool to do this. And there they are. Three trail features, one layer. And I can remove these intermediate layers. And I'll check out the attributes just to confirm that we have three features, each one with a trail name. For my trail symbology, I'd like darker green lines with a lighter green casing to provide contrast, and then a sort of hacky shadow so that it pops up off the map a little bit symbology panel and make this stroke thinner one point and I'll give it a dark peacock green and in the structure tab I'm going to duplicate this line for this casing so I'll make it much thicker and I'll give it a kind of a, a lighter dusty apple it's called and it's a little bit too dark so I'm going to open up the color properties and change its value I'm going to make it a higher value so it's a little bit lighter and grayer and this looks good to me. I'll hit apply and see what we get. A little bit more contrast there. I'll go back into the structure. I'll duplicate this. And now I'm going to do a shadow. And I want to offset it a little bit. So I'll give it a move effect. I'll make it thicker. And I'll change its color to a semi-transparent black. In this case, 80% transparent. And then I'll move it over one and down one. I hit apply. And it gives it just a little bit of pop, but it could use more. So I'm going to duplicate this a couple times and make each version a slightly thicker stroke. This is looking good, but if I zoomed in, the composite base map imagery has some pretty inconsistent looks for some of the water bodies. And while that might be actually how they look, I want to make them consistent. So from naturalearthdata.com, I'm going to download lakes 
and also the North America Lake supplement. And then in Pro, I'll just give both of these layers no stroke and the same color blue as the shallow bathymetry of the oceans. And I use the eyedropper for this. Now it's time for my favorite part of this map, which is terrain. I'm going to add data from Living Atlas and I'll search for terrain elevation. I'm gonna add this amazing terrain service. Dark is low, light is high, and I'll choose dynamic range so it squeezes the values to whatever is within view. And now I'm just gonna recolor this elevation so it looks like mist. Semi-transparent white at the low end and then fully transparent kind of golden at the higher elevation areas. And I'll make the very top fully transparent as well. And it looks like this. Ah, oh, misty. And then I'll just drag this mist above the lakes. It really is amazing what an elevation mist like this can reveal about the terrain of a place. But now it's time to cast some shadows. I'm gonna open the raster functions and expand the surface group and choose hill shade. I'm gonna give it a lower altitude. So that means like a lower sun horizon of 25 degrees. So it'll be more shady. And then I'll give it a blend mode of overlay to bake those textures into the underlying imagery. The hill shade function provides really crispy details, but sometimes it can miss out on the broad strokes. So I'm gonna create a copy of this hill shade layer and I'm gonna open up the function chain. That's all the stuff that's been done to this layer. And I'm gonna open up some more functions and I'm gonna choose statistics. And I'm gonna use statistics to do a blur effect on this elevation model before I apply the hill shade. And the purpose of that is effectively to generalize my elevation model. And then when I do a hill shade on it, it'll be for the chunkier tier one landscapes like the mountain range instead of the hills and valleys within the range. Okay, I'm gonna use the swipe tool to actually compare with and without. So here it is without our chunkier hill shade compared to with on the right. I'll zoom in for a closer look. So on the left is without, on the right is with. You can see that first order range shading is applied, but I don't think anything is happening on my regular hill shade. You see that? There's nothing. That's because it's appearing to fail to render. Sometimes the rendering can be glitchy on these image services, but if you click that refresh button in the bottom right corner, everything will redraw and oftentimes that'll fix it. Next, I'm gonna make three separate copies of these maps and then add them to a layout. Now, if I knew I wasn't gonna make any tweaks to the terrain between the three maps, I could just use the same map duplicated three times instead of making separate copies. But this gives me more flexibility if I wanna customize them individually. In my pro project, I'll insert a new layout. And I'll choose architectural C in portrait orientation. And then inside this layout, I'm gonna insert my map. I'll give it roughly one third of the width and then I'll fine tune that width to make it exactly one third. In this case, six inches is one third of 18 inches and I'll get rid of the outer stroke and then zoom in to the Pacific Crest Trail. Next, I'll go into the catalog view and make individual separate copies of this map for each trail. So I'll have three maps in my project, one for each trail. Then back in my layout, I can duplicate this map view reposition it, and then point it at the trail specific map. It's an option in the map view properties. And then I'll activate this second map view and navigate to the second trail. And then I do it all again for the third map. Duplicate the map view, switch the map that it points to via the properties, activate the map view, and then navigate to the trail. But notice how the Appalachian Trail runs more diagonally than the frame allows. In the map views display options tab, I can just rotate the map within the view until it fits. And once it's in the right orientation, I can adjust its position so it fits within the composition. Do you see these three base map credits that are added automatically? A, it's the same thing three times, and B, I don't like the typography. Are we stuck with them as is? No, check this out. In the layouts insert menu, expand the dynamic text option and scroll down to service layer credits. Ah! And then you can drop them wherever you want and style them however you please. And it also smartly does away with that pesky redundancy. Most of my maps don't need north arrows, but because of the subject matter and the variable orientation, I think north is kind of important for this. I'm gonna use a glassy style north arrow, which you can download here. Then in Pro, I can add this north arrow style file via the catalog. And then in the layout, I'll just insert it and be sure that each north arrow corresponds to the appropriate map view. I'd like to give this layout a sort of vignette effect around the edges. So I'm going to insert a rectangle. 
and I'll give it sort of a thick white stroke to serve as the border. And then for the fill, I'll choose a gradient fill and give it a buffered fill. And I'll go from semi-transparent black to fully transparent black. So it looks kind of shady around the edges. And this effect is way too stark. That doesn't look right actually. So I'll just keep pushing back the transparency more and more until it looks the way I like it. I'll add another rectangle as the background of my header area where the title will go. And I'm gonna make it semi-transparent white. And I want to have a sort of shadow graphic underneath this header. So I'll duplicate the header and give it a semi-transparent black linear gradient. And I'll position it just underneath the header. I'd like to add a little bit of visual distinction between these three panels. So I'm going to insert another rectangle in this rectangle, I'll give a gradient fill of transparent white at the top to opaque white at the bottom. I think that'll be a nice visual effect. And I like it, but I do want to push some of that white opacity a little bit higher into the layout. So I'll just edit its gradient. And then I'll narrow its width so it matches the outer frame. And then I'll just duplicate this and position it over the other seam between the two maps. It's time to add a title to this header. I'll insert some text and give it a name, Triple Crown. And I really like Century Gothic as a map font and a title font. And I'll give it a bit of an icy blue color, tweak it a little bit so it matches the rest of the layout. Here comes the big trick, letter spacing. Can you overdo it? I don't know. Every time I try, it just looks better and better. Enormous letter spacing is a shortcut to great looking titles and labels. I'd like to make this title text pop a little bit more and I'm gonna fake a glow effect. If I open up the text fill symbol, it's really just a polygon. And that means I can give it an outline. In fact, I can give it a bunch of outlines. Each outline is a thicker stroke that's a little bit more semi-transparent. I'll make the innermost stroke semi-transparent white and about two points thick. The more copies of this line layer you make, the smoother and bigger the glow effect will be, or shadow effect if you're using semi-transparent black. And then you can just do the same thing for the subtitles. Oh, I almost forgot the overview map. In the catalog, I've added a new map. Now I just need to stick some states in it from Living Atlas. And I'll give it the same equidistant projection. And then I'll copy over my trails layer from one of the other maps and paste it into this overview map. And I'll simplify the symbology for these trails in the overview map to just the solid stroke. And then in my layout, I'll insert it into the bottom corner where there's not a whole lot going on and it helps balance the header. Then I'll activate this map view and zoom out so that the lower 48 fit within my view. And then I'll change the symbology for these states. I'll make them white and I'll give their outline like a, that dusky blue background and I'll use the eyedropper to sample it right from the background. And of course, I'll get rid of that default black outline around the map view. And then lastly, I'm just gonna fine tune the position and the terrain for these maps. I'll use the rotation property to orient the trail so it best fits within the view. And I'll play with the mist gradient so that they all sort of match each other. For the Pacific Crest Trail, this means bringing up the mist colors. And for the Appalachian Trail, I'll bring them down a little bit. And now it's on to the export. I have the DPI resolution set to 100. Any more than that, with a layout this size, I risk getting omissions in the elevation data set. There's a limit in the amount of elevation data that you can export, so heads up on that. I prefer the PNG format. It's not lossy, and it's so much better than PDF. And you won't get any compression artifacts that you do with a JPEG. And here's the finished map, the triple crown of US hiking.